in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the cold. Make sure you are still praying. Lord of Lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. King of kings, Lord of Lords, you are faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship Praise the bread of life, Emmanuel, God with us, the one who, who saves. We praise the cup of life, that glorious spring that washes our sin. Away. Even so, come, Yeshua, come. Even so, come, take your bride away. How my soul longs to see your face, my Lord, even so, even so, come Yeshua, come. Even so, will you come? Yeshua come go ahead and worship him in prayer even so come and take your bride away how my soul longs to see your face my Lord even so even so come Yeshua, come. Nina Kawo Yabo, Sir King Salama. Nina Kawo Do Kaka, Sir King Salama. Nina Kawo Yabo. Oh, oh, oh. 
Just express your hearts to the Lord. Fix your gaze on Jesus. Thank Him for His mercy. Thank Him for His love. The wonder-working power of Jesus in the midst of His people. We owe you our lives, O oh God, and we owe you our gratitude. From the rising of the sun, even till the going down of the same, we declare that the name of the Lord alone be glorified. We extol you, Lion of the tribe of Judah, mighty God. Da 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 It's a realm of your glory It's a realm of your grace I can see your mighty power Moving in this place we're in the presence of angels with God's glory on the wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy. You are holy. Ta 
Committed to creating the atmosphere for your presence to be made manifest. Don't be tired. These are the kinds of spirit interactions that bring power. We bless you. Go ahead and worship him. Offer unto him the cows of your lips, a sacrifice of praise, a declaration of worship. You mean this much to us, O oh God. As individuals and as a ministry, you mean this much. Who but you is able to lift a man? Who but you is able to bless? Unless you open our eyes, we cannot see. Unless you quicken our ears, we cannot hear. Unless you grant us understanding, we cannot comprehend. Spirit of the living God, this is your atmosphere created by hunger, sponsored by passion, maintained by commitment. Bless him in the spirit. Pray in the spirit, sing in the spirit. Do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the spirit. In Psalms, hymns. Spiritual songs, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord.
Almighty God, thank you for the miracles, for the testimonies. You have proven again and again that you are dependable. You have proven again and again that indeed you are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. The great I am. silent in his presence just the instruments just play something just soak in that glory so play minors not not this just be still for a minute i'm teaching you something it's a culture it's a training there are times that when you worship you just need to be quiet then you let him speak he will speak in pictures he will speak in words he will speak by moving your understanding. This is how we interact. These are the mysteries of the secret place. Just let him speak. It's more than an impartation. It's him speaking back to you. Don't change the sounds, guys. Be sensitive. You were playing something else. Let him speak to your spirit. That's why you came. You think it's just an impartation, but it's not an impartation. It's the power of his voice upon your spirit, man. Answers coming from heaven. Answers coming from heaven. Now arise, O oh Lord. Don't sing with me. Would you come? to your resting place you and the ark of your might and then we will rejoice as we clothe in your righteousness we celebrate your love just be silent and soak in that presence For your name is holy, you're so holy, holy are you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 From the rising of the sun Right until it's going down Just be still, we will sing Of the mercies of the Lord We will preach Of the favor of the Lord We will shout Of the goodness of the Lord we will speak of the power of the Lord. Just 
just be still and know believe me make no mistake to allow the devil make you think you are wasting your time you are getting more than a sermon this is koinonia it's an interaction of the spirit a quickening your weakness being changed by his strength mm. holy fire burn upon my altar from within me spirit to take over holy fire burn upon my altar holy fire burn upon my altar from within me spirit to take over holy fire burn upon my altar holy fire holy fire holy fire burn up on my altar holy fire burn up on my altar from within me spirit to take over holy fire burn up on my altar Let the weight of your glory fall Let it cover all the earth The Spirit of the Lord is mighty in this place Let the weight of your glory fall It's bringing healing healing the healing anointing is strong in this place incurable diseases under the atmosphere of his shakaina salamaranda katosha lakatos taking away weaknesses taking away yokes and burdens let it cover all the earth let it cover all the earth beauty for ashes the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified a few minutes and you'll be seated I'm taking away burdens the spirit of the Lord is speaking taking away burden is rolling away the reproach of your past rolling away the reproach of your past the spirit of the Lord is rolling away the reproach of your past that this proverb will no longer be used in your life the Lord is rolling away reproach tears physical tears are coming out of my eyes and the Lord is saying this is the captivity of a family being rolled away rolled away I'm sensing the burden of a family a family that has been under captivity and the Lord is saying in this season he's rolling it away rolling it away this is the cry of the spirit just let God do what he's doing let it be rolled away oh God let it be rolled away oh God let it be rolled away oh God the cry of a family 
coming to the ears of the Savior, the Redeemer. He's rolling it away. A widespread plague of sickness. A widespread plague of failure. A widespread plague of death in his presence. Mighty, mighty presence. Resting on everything that is not the Christ. Hello, you You are God and God by yourself. Your majesty, 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 your majesty. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing an activation of the gift of the Spirit. This is what the Lord is ministering to me. I'm seeing dormant spiritual investments finding expression. Graces that were once in use and for some reason just went down. It's like there is an opening in the Spirit and suddenly I'm seeing gifts being activated. The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the deciding of spirit, revelatory gifts being activated by the spirit of the Lord. Being activated by the spirit of the Lord. You see, what this session is doing is it is killing the flesh. The flesh hates what is happening. This is one of the ways that the flesh is crucified by exposing the flesh to the light of his power. It's an uncomfortable position for the flesh. Just a few minutes and you'll be seated. This is not the making of a man. It's the Holy Ghost doing something to your spirit, man. Yeah, na 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 na. Yeah, yeah. 
na 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 Ah shalando sara sobra haske de balash There are some of you the Lord is giving you new tongues new prayer languages new tongues new tongues new tongues new tongues is giving you new tongues new tongues you will no longer pray like you have prayed before a new language a new frequency in the spirit this is what is happening i'm seeing coals of fire being put upon the tongues of people new tongues new tongues that's what the spirit of the lord is revealing to me kara sabaro jale karikata new tongues utterances of the spirit utterances you have never heard before utterances you have never known before some of you they will start right here at koinonia and for others it will be at your secret place some it will be at your prayer group just fix your eyes upon jesus for the next one or two minutes The oil of favor. The oil of favor. The oil of favor. The oil of favor. I hear this in my spirit. I echo it and I hear it in my spirit. The oil of favor. The oil of favor. Lord, let it flow like a river everywhere within this building, everywhere within the overflows, online, the oil of favor that you will be drenched and you will be soaked in this oil, leaving this service with a realm of extraordinary fruitfulness by the favor of God. Hallelujah. Just close your eyes if you can. Just focus on Jesus. One minute. Please don't be distracted. Whether whatever is happening around you is none of your business. Just be focused. Hear what he says to you. Hear what he says to you about your life. Hear what he says to you about your relationship with him. Hear what he says to you about your family. Hear what he says to you about the solution. Hear what he says to you. Hear what he says to you about the pain. Hear what he says to you about your ministry. You can trust what you are hearing now. You can trust what you are hearing now. It can't be the devil speaking to you. Not after this atmosphere. You can trust what you are hearing now. For some of you, he's saying, I am still God. I am still God. In spite of all that has happened in your life, I am still God. I am still God. I am still God. You have come too far to doubt. I am still God. I am still God. Spirit of the living God, 
evermore we desire you you have called this place koinonia a place of your presence a place of victory a place of renewal a place of revival a place of restoration Restoration of fire, restoration of hunger, restoration of grace, restoration of patterns, restoration of covenants. We pray tonight. That Jesus and him alone be glorified in this place. And Father, I pray, if this is all you do tonight, we are more than grateful for giving us an experience that shifts us to realms unimagined. This is what separates us from noisemakers. This is the factor of the spirit. Evermore, spirit of the living God, this remains your place. Evermore, evermore. Replace any man as you will and as you wish. Shift us to whatever direction we are that malleable. We pray that as men look at men, they will not see men. But they will see Jesus in the midst of the lamb stands, in the midst of the candle stands. We are giving ourselves wholly to this because we know that our profiting will appear unto all. We are tapping, O oh God, into the ancient mysteries that you taught our fathers. You taught they that went ahead of us that when men stay in your presence they can renew their strength like the eagle they can mount up with wings they can run and not be tired they can walk and not be weary we exchange our weaknesses tonight with your strength we exchange our frustrations. We exchange our limitations. We exchange our pain. We exchange our fears. We exchange our doubts. We exchange our confusions. Because worship is a place of exchange. More than a place of reception. Let everything that is not you in us, leave us. Let everything that is not you in us, be exited out of our lives. Let everything that is not you in us, leave. And let that space be filled experientially with more of you. More of your light, more of your power, more of your wisdom a deeper hunger for fellowship more than ministry more than preaching more than leadership more than prosperity more than fame more than money may we desire you remain the object of our pursuit remain the object of our passion remain the jurisdiction of our pursuit Thank you, Father. We bless you, we honor you, and we worship you. Forever be glorified. This is Koinonia. 
you have called it by its name you have engraced it by understanding let this place remain a tabernacle of your presence you can do without us but please carry us along there are infinite replacements but we pray by the message of the God of heaven let this place remain a center where your eyes continue to behold let this place remain a place of mysteries let this place remain a place of encounters let this place remain a place of miracles signs wonders let this place remain a place of bread bethel understanding the richness the abundance of your supplies let this be the wealthy place the place where you exchange our limitations for the supplies of heaven let this place remain the place where men meet with God we vow that forever you will be glorified we vow that forever we will only lift up the anthem of your name we hide behind the cross we hide our flesh we hide every personal agenda and we pray that Jesus and him alone will be seen experienced and known thank you father thank you for your atmosphere in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. Please sit quietly if you can. God bless you. Whoa. Just help those under the anointing. Very powerful time very very powerful time every once in a while God will show up in these dimensions those under the anointing just help them just keep them somewhere quiet hallelujah a few minutes with us tonight and then we will pray I want to encourage everyone to continue to press towards the things of God um, it's very easy to be distracted in this kingdom. It's very easy to lose focus, to major on the minors. Let's settle down, please, those inside, outside, and minor on the majors. But God brings us here to help us, even by his spirit. I want to share with you something very briefly that I believe is very powerful and very instructive and then we'll have the opportunity to pray if you're with me please say amen. amen it's a revelation that god put in my heart is for koinonia but then it's for the body of christ and i believe that the lord will help us tonight why prophecies fail please write and Let's discuss within a few minutes a very powerful understanding that God gave me. Why prophecies fail. First Timothy chapter 1, please, and verse 18. Believers continue to struggle with the tragedy of unfulfilled please listen please listen unfulfilled prophecies praise the lord the lord is speaking to someone in overflow one it will not happen as you have seen i don't know what i'm saying but the lord is just asking me to speak it just like that it will not happen as you have seen i believe that tonight's um, message may be why the anointing 
is moving in this dimension it will not happen as you have seen it will not happen as you have seen it will not happen as you have seen in the name of jesus christ praise the lord so many believers continue to battle with unfulfilled prophecies here and there men and women of god all over the world continue to speak the counsel of god the word of god to individuals but then we notice that people receive these prophecies and most now let me tell you sincerely most of the prophecies we receive never come to pass and tonight is an attempt to very quickly show us what may be wrong and then also to reveal to us the place of the prophetic listen very carefully and the place of the word of god because there are people for instance who have seen things in visions in dreams or have received prophetic words from anointed people genuine people filled with the holy spirit and these prophecies may not have been consistent with the dealings of god some of them may have been negative prophecies and they have remained helpless believing that just because a man anointed by god accredited by god made a pronouncement and utterance to them it meant that nothing could be done about it and then they sit down and allow those prophecies happen so we're dealing with the prophetic today and i pray that god will grant us understanding so let's go very quickly our time is gone read with me verse 18 everyone one to read this charge i commit unto thee son timothy uh-huh according to the prophecies which went before on thee that thou war a good warfare stop there paul is speaking to his son in the gospel timothy and he's saying that some prophecies were released to go ahead of you now understand what he's saying he's encouraging him he's saying mr man be assured of this that we have released prophetic words to go ahead of you but he tells him that by them, those prophecies that have gone ahead of you, you will war a good warfare. Hallelujah. So it is possible that prophetic words can be sent ahead of a person. Please listen very carefully. Whether in ministry, in family life, business, career, whatever it is, that the prophetic is real. Now let me balance this up front even before we continue our discussion. There are people here and there who probably because of their religious affiliations, their denominations, or the kind and the structure of mentorship they may have received, may have been trained by well-meaning, sincere men and women of God to ignore or despise the prophetic, to despise prophecy. We find people, some persons have been very vocal about the fact that the prophetic is not useful in today's church and all versions of sarcasm has been communicated as regards the prophetic the bible says very clearly and i think that i will just um solve that once and for all in first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20 let the word of god speak once and for all first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20 if you're a christian please read with me one to read despise not prophesying one more time this is a warning do not despise prophesying do not despise the place of the prophetic in your journey to knowing god and living a meaningful life that means that the bible recognizes that there is a place for the prophetic okay so we establish that up front that there is a place for the prophetic and the bible says to not despise it 
that means that if you find yourself in an environment where yourself or the leaders around you continue to despise prophesying you don't have to fight anybody you don't have to create trouble but let it be a settled conviction within you that in the journey of a believer there is a place listen carefully there is a place for the prophetic there is a place for prophesying are we together When it comes to the prophetic, the Bible lets us know that even scripture is prophecy. Do you agree with me? Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19, please. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. He says we have also a more sure word of prophecy when you read in context coming down you will know that he was speaking about scripture as a more sure word of prophecy he says where unto ye do well that ye take heed now listen very carefully so he's telling you that there are prophesyings that have to do with the speakings of men under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Are we together? He's telling you that there is another kind of prophesying that is the revelation as captured in Scripture. He says to also take heed as well. So do not despise the prophesyings that has to do with the speakings of men and that you do not despise the prophesying that has to do with the authority of Scripture. The prophecy of scripture, we call it. Are we together now? Yes. The character of these two dimensions of prophetic operations are not the same. Please listen very, very carefully. So the Bible is prophetic. The words that are written in scripture are prophetic. The words that are spoken by a man under the influence of the Spirit of God to you, real time, is also prophetic. But in terms of superiority, please listen, they are not all the same. Although engineered by the Spirit of God, the Bible lets us know, please look at me, that the prophecy of Scripture and the prophecy that comes from a vessel, they are all together to the edifying of the saints, but they do not hold the same weight in the spirit. You have to learn this. The word more sure means more reliable, more dependable. Are we together? It attempts to show you the excellency of the prophecy of scripture. That means that if given an option for both of them, the Bible gives you its recommendation in terms of reliability and certainty. It tells you to depend on the prophecy that comes from scripture. Are we together? There are many reasons for this and that's, that's, not, that's not where I'm going tonight. My goal is to show you why prophecies fail and then to connect a few things and we'll pray. The Bible in many expressions tells us that scripture has been tried seven times the word seven there means complete that the truths of scripture have been vetted again and again and has been found reliable listen the bible is not the only book that contains pieces of the wisdom of god listen carefully here and there God has dealt with people. Here and there, different religions have tapped into the wisdom of God through the understanding of his principles. And they have captured details that are consistent with God's operation. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Chances are that you can pick a book that is non-Christian. You can pick any religious book on earth and read it and you will find communications that are consistent with the way God would have spoken and how God would have acted. And the results, even in those books, show you 
that the agency that supplied that result was not of the devil. It's not an endorsement to the books. The advantage of the Bible is that as a singular compendium, it contains the wisest perspective in all matters. Are we together now? Listen very carefully now. It contains the wisest perspective. Why? Because they are God's opinion. Among all of the books that have been arrayed for the edification of man, the Bible, as a compendium of 66 books, has been recommended by the Spirit of God that it can guide men to know God. It can guide men to become victorious. When you study theology, you will find out that there are many other books. They are generally called extra-biblical texts. There is what we call the annals of the king. There's what we call the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's what we call the books of Jasha. All of these books are extra-biblical materials that were written. Are we together now? But then in the wisdom of God and through his predetermined counsel, he has found out that the truths contained in this compendium we call the Bible is sufficient to be the limit of the jurisdiction of your knowing God. You will find many books that contain certain information that may not be captured here. And God is telling you within the context of your civilization, any knowledge about me that is not in this volume is not required for life and godliness in as much as you're working with me is concerned. So the Bible becomes the coordinates if you allow me use that word the bible becomes the defining jurisdiction for your knowing god listen very carefully i'm showing you the reasons why the word of god is called a more sure word of prophecy god has vetted the truths here and found out that any believer that settles with scripture as contained in this book under the influence of the Holy Spirit, there is no dimension of God required for your knowledge that the truths here in partnership with the Holy Spirit cannot bring you into. So it's called the more sure word. It has predicted your life already. More than any man can predict. More than any man can prophesy. Are you getting what I'm telling you now? The vessel that speaks to you is limited by many factors. Number one, the accuracy of his or her perception. Number two, the accuracy of his or her interpretation. Number three, the atmosphere that became the influence upon which he spoke. Are we together? Number four, the level of renewal of that vessel as at the time he spoke. All of these are factors all together that can interrupt the purity and the quality of the speakings. It doesn't mean the person is fake. These are the things that water down the efficacy of the prophetic. Are we together? And then the mental development of that prophet or that speaker also matters. Chances are that if naturally speaking... I'm a person that detests excellence. If God is giving me a prophetic word that relates to excellence, my, my prior fortitude for trivializing excellence will make that prophetic word not come with the gravity with which it left heaven. Because in my person, I don't find excellence to be something that is needed. If I'm someone, for instance, who does not believe finance and prosperity is useful, are we together? If a prophetic word comes that God is going to make Sam a millionaire. Remember, I've trained myself to be embarrassed to even talk of millionaire because I've interpreted it as carnality. Chances are that I would just say you are going to be blessed. You see that now. So the efficacy of that prophetic word was corrupted by the limitation of my spiritual understanding. But then let's assume, for instance, that I was accurate enough to deliver it, to be fair enough, and you now receive it. Now, remember, I'm not fake. 
Remember, I'm anointed. Remember, you too, you are not fake. You see that now? Yes. The giver and the believer have to be real for it to work. So, we agree that two of us are not fake. Are we together? And now you receive that word. And then it never comes to pass. And you go back to God and say, Lord, what happened? I got a prophetic word by a man of God. And according to the word, he said by June, I will have a car. Remember, he called my name. It was accurate. He called the name of my wife. It was accurate. Every other detail was accurate. So it supported my believing him. Yet it did not happen. I even fell down. You can add it. And it didn't happen. He prophesied to me that as I return back, my ministry will expand. He described in detail my ministry. Called the name. Called everything. I went back and after five years were worse than even before I came for that consultation. What is the reason? Why do prophecies fail? This is a question that even men of God, apostles and prophets themselves, have not seemed to find an answer to. So usually, as men, the obvious answer is to transfer blames. So I come to you and I say, it has to be your fault. You didn't have faith. You didn't believe me. My track record is there to show. And then the other person says, well, I may have my track record, but I don't know what happened to you at the time you are speaking to me. I know that it was not God. And then we read scriptures like God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Are we together now? When you read these scriptures, it further confuses you because you are now looking and say, that means that it is within God's power to bring his word to pass. The reason why many people are confused over spiritual things is because we don't read our Bibles. We listen to people. But we don't study scripture. We do morning devotions. We listen to messages online. Profitable and wonderful. But we don't stay with scripture. For the purpose of building understanding. Building conviction. So most of our convictions are outsourced and borrowed. Our convictions are hardly intrinsic. Something that came as a result of a revelation given by God. Most of our convictions are outsourced. We borrow the confidence of someone we respect. Just because the person said, this is it. We say, this is it too. Why do prophecies fail? Hallelujah. Are we blessed? So many people have relaxed and crossed their legs. So many people have even written the prophetic words that were spoken unto them. Barren women have received prophecies. You will have a child. And it's five years gone. No child. Sick people in the hospital receive prophetic words. Do you have a loved one in the hospital? Yes, sir. Is he sick? Yes, sir. About to die? Yes, sir. Thus saith the Lord, he shall not die. Isaiah 38. Mighty God, we give you praise. Give us understanding and be glorified. Isaiah chapter 38. Mm. In those days, look up please, was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, Isaiah the what? The son of Amos came unto him and said, help me read. Thus saith the Lord. Stop there. So we agreed that it was not the speakings of Isaiah. Thus saith who? The Lord. Set thy house in order. Why? For thou shalt die and not live. Don't call anybody fake again because the prophecy is negative. 
who spoke negative here thus say it who now talk to me i mean we're christians don't just begin to the man was a vessel i brought you drew me a package you opened it and saw a gun and you arrest no you, you don't i i was sent i'm a messenger thus say it the lord set your house in order he says for thou shalt die who are you going to beg Who will you beg to help you beg God? That God sends a prophet and he speaks. Put your house in order. You are going to die. Verse 2. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed unto who? <laughs> he turned and prayed unto the Lord. Verse 3. And said, remember now Oh Lord, I beseech thee how I have walked before thee in sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. And with a perfect heart and I have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept so. Verse 4. Then then hold on. The first time he said, Thus sayeth the Lord. Now he's saying, The word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying, Verse 5 Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus sayeth the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. Listen. What was wrong, oh God, with your understanding? Couldn't you see the end from the beginning again? You sent a prophet with your reputation on him. And within minutes, prophecies changed. This is a discussion between God and a man. A man goes to God and says, God, what did I hear that you said? You said I'm going to die. Let me do something to you that will make you change your own word. Please listen. I have added now 15 days to your, to your years. Verse 6. And I will deliver thee and this city from the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. Next verse. We're reading to verse 8. And this shall be a sign from the Lord that what you now hear is more superior than what you had before. Because the both for and against me came from God. So why, which one should I believe? Remember, thus saith the Lord before came from God. Thus saith the Lord now also came from God. You have kept me in limbo. And God is saying, I will give you a sign. To show you which is superior. Please go back. Verse 7. Verse 7. That the Lord will do this thing that he has spoken. Which one? Which one didn't he speak? <laughs> Verse 8. Behold... I will bring again the shadow of the degrees which is gone down in the sun this and that and that backwards so the sun returned 10 degrees by which degrees it was gone down he gave him a sign so by the time the guy saw the sun going down he said ah this sign was tied to the second prophecy and based on it i know now and i have confidence that something i have done has made God to override the first prophecy. There is not, let me tell you some interesting things here. Number one, God never admitted he made a mistake. So it was not a mistake. God is, ah, sorry, is it you? Uh, 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 Isaiah, you know how busy I am. I have to speak to this and that. No. God acted as if he didn't talk before. L listen to this. 
He would have said, okay, go back and say, it's okay, it's okay. No, you don't need to cry. I'm God. Am I still not your father? He just changed as if he's not the one. Imagine if you were that prophet. It's as if God just denied you now and left you in trouble. Imagine if Isaiah came to your church. If um, who? Hezekiah came to your church. Miracle service. And you now prophesied. And said, this is what I see. Oh. The same way it moved from positive to negative. I can also stand in the name of the Lord and prophesy to you that by next week, five of you will be in America. And by next week, one person is in jail. The other person is in the hospital. And you will come back and say, Mr. Man, come and arrest this man because he is fake. Between the first prophecy and the second prophecy, man did something. Listen to me very carefully. Between the first speaking of God and what he changed, man did something. That means between a positive prophecy and a negative one that happens, there is man in between that does something that can turn prophecy. Please listen to me and learn this. All personal prophecies, write it down please. All personal prophecies spoken by any servant of God. All. All personal prophecies spoken by any servant of God have conditions that must be adhered to for their actualization. All prophecies. There is no prophecy spoken by any man of God on earth that happens on his own. Are we together? Listen. The prophecy of scripture is a revelation of of the preset principles of God that has already been attached to his speakings. Notice, notice how the construction of scripture is. For every speaking of God, there is a condition. Are you seeing that now? The moment you satisfy that condition, there are some of them you don't even have to pray. The moment you satisfy that condition, it happens. Are we together now? Look at this. I don't need to speak to your ground, your farm, and say in the name of Jesus, except I'm not a man of God. Corn, you must come out this year. No. Already a word had been sent while the earth remains. Seed time and harvest. That means if I never sow, I would not know whether that word is still valid or not. So my sowing gives the word an opportunity to prove itself and then it grows. That the word of God is more sure because already for everything God says, the principle to actualize it has been added. As a man of God, I can receive prophecy for you and not be able to be aligned enough to receive the principle that makes that prophecy come to pass. I can tell you God is going to lift you, but the limitation of my prophetic reception does not allow me to tell you what you must do to make that prophecy come to pass. So I just tell you, this is what I see. You are great. The word of God says, this is what you must do. You are great too. Choose which of the two. That if you never meet a physical man who speaks to you, you can go to Jesus the prophet. I am the way, the truth, and life. Jesus the prophet and look at a scripture and lift that scripture as Jesus speaking to you and say Jesus I hear you I've heard you say to me that it shall come to pass if I diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to observe and do all that you command me this day that you will set me on high above all the nations of the earth and that these blessings will come upon me and overtake me there is no witch in hell hear me 
if you prophesy to me and say, Apostle, I see failure. You are not wrong. But I, have, I know that there is a more sure word of prophecy. For as long as I walk in keeping with what Jesus the prophet said, there is no divination and there is no enchantment from the pit of hell that can override the authority. In the cadre of authority, the prophecy of scripture stands superior to any human prophecy. Men of God and women of God are gradually pushing prophecy outside of the jurisdiction of its relevance. And members are today becoming slaves to men and women of God. A man seems to be able to own the souls of people because you can just speak to anybody anyhow. And they go back saying, this one has spoken. Apostle Joshua Selman has spoken. No. Prophecies can fail to the negative or to the positive. I can speak to you and say God will bless you. You will eat well. Don't obey the principles of scripture that make for increase and you will be surprised. When men say there is a casting down, you will join them and say there is a casting down. Why? Because you violated the principle. There is no truth of scripture. Salvation is the freest thing we know. And the condition is that if thou shalt believe with thy heart, talk to me koinonia, and thou shalt confess with your mouth, that means you can stand around a preacher and he can preach a powerful sermon and you will still go to hell. You had the word, but you still went to hell. This action part, this condition part is why many prophecies fail. The prophet spoke in scripture that a virgin shall be with child. He didn't say a virgin called Mary. He said a virgin. There were many women who qualified for that prophecy. But one woman aligned herself enough. So the angel came to say, Madam, we have found you favored. And I've taught you that favor does not happen automatically. Mary was understudied from heaven. There were many other ladies, but heaven looked at Mary. Does she sustain, please help them, does she sustain the character? Will Mary be able to stand the embarrassment of getting pregnant from a ghost? The way Mary is, if pressure is too much, are you sure she's not going to corner Joseph and run away? Is this woman, is she liable to receiving a bribe from a rabbi? Mary was not just favored. She was studied. Her alignment was making her partner with prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And then the angel came back and said, Mary, we have found you favored. And the favor is that based on our examination, you are the most fit person among the virgins here to carry Jesus. She said, well, um, I don't want to abort prophecy. How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. And then the angel explained that, okay, this is what will happen. You will not need to meet a man. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. Your stomach will just start bulging out. Don't find it strange. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't worry. It's okay. And she said, be it unto me. Be the word unto me. I received the word. Be it unto me according to your word. Mary would have sat down. And said, no, this deal is not fair. The ghost has to come with you and explain to me. And let me understand. If I see him and I think he's really a spirit and that, do you know it would have delayed the birth of Jesus? Heaven would have had to now go back and start looking for another person again. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very powerful. So God has spoken great things over our lives. Many of us received the word. We didn't receive the conditions. We left the conditions on the ground. When we fell down, we got up, we received the word. But we left the conditions. As a result, 
our lives are a shadow of what God said should be because we received the word but did not receive the conditions. The angel comes and tells Joshua that this city will be defeated but then he gives him the conditions immediately and demands that the conditions be adhered to in total. So he began to go around Jericho once every day. The seventh day he went seven times and they shouted and prophecy came to pass. There is no prophecy that happens on its own. There are few prophecies in the Bible that are called written judgments. There are verdicts already that have been declared. One of it is the eternal doom of Lucifer. There is no prayer retreat that will happen to beg God to change his mind about the condition of Satan. So if you have a dream and you see Satan coming back in heaven to join the seraphs, you know straight up that you are under attack because based on the truth of scripture written, it's a written judgment. Are we together? Another written judgment, the eternal doom of those who reject Christ, the Antichrist and his cohorts, these things are written. The only thing you can do is to exempt yourself from it, but you cannot stop it. Number three, the reality of causes and yokes on earth is written. Ordinances were intentionally put. The only thing you can, you can't stop causes on the earth. No, they are there. The only thing you can do is exempt yourself from it. You can say minus me and my family, but to say minus it out of the earth, no sir, it is not given to you. You can cast out demons from your life, from a church, from your vicinity, but not from the earth. There is nobody who will stand and gather all the demons on earth because he said, I behold, I give you power. Remember scripture, power. So I have that authority. I've been risen with Christ above all thrones, dominions, and every name that is named. You gather all the demons in one place, catch them, and let there be peace on earth. No, that does not happen. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. The number one reason why prophecies do not come to pass is because people receive the word but do not receive the condition. The condition for actualizing the prophecies. The other side of this is that you can change any prophecy. Write it down, please. Don't let anybody tell you there are prophetic words that will not change and cannot change. That is against the character of scripture. The Bible shows us again and again that it is within the power of a believer. Shabrakatos kapadia to change prophecies that means if your father looks at you and says you are cursed you are a foolish and stupid son i know a woman years ago when i was in secondary school there was a woman who was tired of her son stealing she will make her little money and this naughty boy will come and carry continue to fish the money out of the, the mother's wallet and one day she was angry and she looked at him and cursed him she said he will stop stealing only when rat stop stealing let me tell you, this guy, as soon as he's going out of the cell, he won't reach two weeks, he's back again. They know him, they just open the door, there's nothing to ask. What happened? Mm -mm. Just walk in, we know. Do you think that boy does not have a way out? Imagine that that boy is in a place where he never meets a man who can speak to him. Is there hope for that boy? Yes, sir. There is Jesus the prophet. That he can look at it. That even the lawful captives, is it in your Bible? A more sure word of prophecy, even the lawful captives can be delivered. So you can find this truth and believe it. But you just get up and say, wow, I found it. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I'm delivered. Hallelujah. You are not delivered. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You are only informed about deliverance that is possible. Are you seeing how we mock ourselves? We just find it out. Oh, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm done. And right after then, you will see what they said should happen. Happen. 
there are conditions what made the captive lawfully captive and what is the condition for that person to be delivered the biggest hit of this prophetic inaccuracy is in the area of financial prosperity many poor people in the church today the years they have spent waiting for prophecy is the same time they would have activated the blessings of god upon their lives they have sat down lazily and carelessly and some foolishly waiting for a prophetic word by an accurate man and members continue to harass men of god around and say you have spoken it's not working i bless you i bless you you are correct but you go and read and study everything the bible says about the blessing how it works and how it is activated and you'll find out that many people are hoping in futility it's true charismatics this is where charismatics have failed the excitement that comes with revelation has swallowed up the need for compliance people just jump here and there things will happen he shall keep the imperfect peace yes and no evil shall come nigh thy dwelling you go and look for trouble and see what happens it will look as if angels are no longer there so what have you, I, I, I get what i'm saying now yes you can choose to end your life now today right now you go and stand you go and stand on the road let me be prophesying in jesus name you will live long i stand under the oil god has given me while you stroll foolishly you use your will that is more powerful that's the same will that brought jesus into your heart jesus stood at the gate of your heart and would not enter until that will let him in and you stand in front of a door and a truck the spirit of death is an opportunist he looks for a scenario that makes his ministry possible so he's scouting around zaria and here he finds someone about to stand near a t-junction carelessly he will heighten the drunkenness of the driver and with speed he will not see you he will come and clear you you are dead now resurrection is a different law altogether we can now start but as far as that seed is concerned you are dead hallelujah let me tell you something that happened to a young man i'm sure he may be listening or maybe he's here it's a big mistake that the boy made he had some carryovers and um he saw me in a dream <coughs> according to him i appeared in a dream and i told him i said everything is all right now watch this now everything is all right very consistent with what god will say <laughs> are we together the same way God looks at the poor and says, let the poor say, I am rich. They said, I'm rich till they became old. Nothing happened. <laughs> and then the gentleman got up and didn't even do anything. He refused to take the carryovers, refused to do anything. And he just sat there and he called me and was sending text messages and was telling me, look, I'm not trying to jeer the gentleman. No, not at all. I'm just trying to use it to correct. Now, you see, that word was at the mercy of a condition. Are we together now? Is it not when your lecturer sees your script? Now, you have done your own part to at least write. The Spirit of God can now move upon that man to show you mercy. Mercy is not possible now because the condition to activate the mercy was not granted. The same way the Bible says that you will build houses and you keep looking at your land that house will not be built someone will look at you and say speak to me say I, I, the same thing i told you last year is what god is showing me again the day you take a step of faith and you buy sharp sand one tipper and pour there by faith what happens that's your five loaf and two fish you are ready for a miracle a destiny helper can now come and say what's going on here say I'm, I'm starting life i'm pushing this thing by faith say, really come to my office tomorrow now your obedience has allowed prophecy to find expression are we together yes your marriage shall be a blessing 
your children surround your table you will see your children's children you are a bad gentleman and you are a bad lady god will never that prophecy will never come to pass are, are you getting what i'm saying now there are many guys that just cross their legs i saw myself i saw my children i saw a jeep here i saw a resort center here you are dreaming let me tell you this prophecy will never come to pass because god demands diligence and productivity for wealth to happen you have ignored that law and so that prophecy will never come to pass are we together your marriage will be a blessing if you know what it takes for a husband and a wife to live together if the only thing you take to your marriage is prophecy you are in trouble you must take understanding you must take what understanding so that when your wife shouts and says, I hate you, I hate you, I hate the day I married you, you just know that she doesn't mean what she's saying. If you carry that, that straight line prophetic thinking and slap her, that's the end of that marriage. In spite of the fact that the Bible says you will see your children's children. Prophecies can fail. When men do not satisfy the conditions that make for the actualization of that prophecy, it will fail. The same way negative prophecies can be averted. I've told you, I've shared this with you once and again that people continue, you know, here and there, people can have dreams about me over trips that I'm taking, whether by road or by air, and they can send a text and say, Apostle, I got up, I saw a very dangerous dream. Very dangerous dream. And this is it, and I saw a ghastly motor accident, or I saw a plane crash, and you are there. Now, they are not fake, truly. It may be that that's the plot of the enemy. It would be stupid for me to think Satan is going on break for me. No. There are many people who think the devil is attacking them. The devil is not attacking them. Do you know what it takes for Satan to attack you? You to be honest, if you were Satan, will you attack everybody? It's not strategic. What have you done that justifies being attacked? The level of investment you think Satan is making on you is, is, is flattery. Most of what we are getting is the inertia of prophecy. Just sitting on your life and not moving. Because you have refused to do something about it. Take Satan out of the earth. People's condition will only improve a little. Only do what? Improve a little. You will be surprised. You will think if Satan is taken out of the earth, suddenly the poor will be rich. Suddenly. you. In fact, let me tell you, there are many people who the, God uses the way the devil pushes them to help them understand God. You will be surprised to see that some people's situation will be worse when Satan is out. Because there's no basis for pain again to bring conviction. Some of you right now are sitting down waiting for prophecies to happen by themselves. Some of our parents received prophecies since 1980, 1970 till today. That prophecy has not come to pass. And we continue to carry disappointment in our hearts. I am showing you right now, listen very carefully, that more than the speakings of any man, you must find a place there are many men of God who people will look and say, I see a grace on you. Say, yes, I, I, somebody has told me before, confirmation. I see that you will be a powerful man of God. Yes, sir. I'm seeing like Reinhard Bonke. I see Reinhard Bonke. The other one said that you will never be like Reinhard. Do you know what Reinhard Bonke did to be Reinhard Bonke? Talk about the times of prayer. Talk about the times of fasting. Listen to me. Talk about the times of engaging the word. Talk about the disciplines that it takes to host God's power. You ignore that there is no Reinhard Bonke for you. The worst, in fact, let me even take it a step further before we pray. The worst one is that hands were laid on you when prophecies came. And you just believed that because hands were laid and I fell down. I got up with conditions satisfied automatically. No, you were engraced by that falling. The real anointing for the result has not yet been given. That anointing for the result is waiting when your obedience is complete. That's when it comes on you. The anointing you received, I'm telling you, is the grace to walk in keeping with the conditions that bring that prophecy. 
Are we together? It's a simple message, but it will work wonders in your life. You will call your brother very quickly and say, sir, please come. I already know that this your journey is heading nowhere. Just sit down. Let us discuss. Why is this family like this? He said, don't worry. Prophecy just came last week. And you will know who to drive away from your house respectfully. By the time he comes again, singing all kinds of songs and saying, it does not work, Abi, let's walk again. Bring 200,000. Bring one chicken. Bring one bag of rice. And then success will imaginarily happen. No, sir. Whether a man is fake or real, the result in your life will be the same if you don't engage it. Did you hear what I said? Whether a prophet is fake or a prophet is real, once there is no engaging the conditions that make for actualizing that prophecy, your result, I guarantee you, will be the same. It's why many people don't go to church. They went to a herbalist and the herbalist prophesied to them. And then they got born again and went to a real man of God. He prophesied to them. The result was the same. Zero. And they said, I don't, there's no difference. There will not be difference because the defining factor is not God, not the prophets, but you, the recipient of that prophecy. If God tells you you are going to marry a multi-millionaire, what are you supposed to do? Thanksgiving. Yes, Thanksgiving. But what, what do you do else where you finish Thanksgiving? You go back and start saying, God, help me. A millionaire means many people will hate him. A millionaire means that he may not have time to rest. A wise person begins to war with prophecy. You, God tells you now you will be a millionaire. How do you behave? Buy new clothes. No, sir. That's not how to conform to prophecy. You go back and follow them who through faith and patience. Once you don't see faith and patience, don't follow them. Even if you see the promise, you must see faith and patience to qualify followership. Anybody you see the promise and you don't see faith, meaning there must be a God equation in their life. There must be something in their equation that forced them to need God. Are we blessed? There are many things today that God has brought this ministry into that God did not directly prophesy to me. I'm not one of those men of God that will lie to you that everything we're seeing is what God... Mm -hmm. There are things God did not tell me. I went to the word, Jesus the prophet. I looked at the truths of scripture. I understood the truths of scripture. And I saw the conditions attached to it. Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I read and studied how Jesus increased in ministry. Jesus increased in ministry because he first increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. That means for anything to increase around you, something must increase within you. That's a revelation. So I don't move around with the brain of 50 members and the prayer request of 5,000 members. It doesn't work that way. I must upgrade myself spiritually, intellectually to be able to host the kind of increase that I trust God to bring. We only know that a crowd came to Jesus, but Jesus grew. At age 12, when his mates were running around, Jesus was at the temple learning, learning. Are we together? There were a few times in scripture where we saw Jesus around feasts. There were a few times in scripture where we saw Jesus just enjoying himself. That's the portrait of a serious man of God. You, God has called you into ministry. Every movie that comes out, you must see it and watch it. It's all right if you are called into the movie ministry. But if you are called into the word ministry with power and signs and wonders, that's too much luxury. To host the anointing. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. Sincerely, I, I tell you the truth as a man of God. I stand from the standpoint of the knowledge that God has given me. And I look at many people and respectfully I can tell you. There are people that results are far from them. 
I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But even when people stand for me to pray for them, I know that what I'm, I'm doing is not the final solution to that problem. And it is painful as a man of God. Not many people will tell you this truth. Because sometimes you see men of God who are victims of manipulating the ignorance of people. The ignorance of people can be used to the advantage of the man of God. There are times that people stand with seeds here sincerely. And I look at them and they say, Apostle, I just emptied my account and my heart is bleeding. What is this for now? You say, Apostle, I know things can turn around in my family. I know the answer is yes and no. Yes, a breakthrough can come. But sustainable financial open doors, no, sir. There are truths you must learn. So I tell the person, okay, go and get koinonia teachings there. And sometimes as I'm talking to them, they start shaking. The moment they fall, they stand up and just laugh. You see some of them calling their loved ones, it's done. No, it's not exactly done. Honestly. You see, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You must, you must, you must love God and love people to be dishonest. There are very successful people in this ministry, in business, career, and so on and so forth. Every one of them can tell you the different units, the different dimensions that construct themselves together to spell success were adhered to. Where the prophetic was needed, they opened themselves to that dimension. Where prayer was needed, they opened themselves. Where diligence was needed, they opened themselves. Like the ingredients of a, of a meal, everything was combined together to equal success. This is what I'm teaching you. Handing over the responsibility of your destiny to the prophetic alone as the ultimate determinant of your success and not staying with the word of God to understand the conditions will end you in futility and in pain. There were many things that I did not see in my life in spite of the prophetic words I kept receiving. I had to study prophecy and say, look, I have to look at this thing and examine it very carefully. And I began to find out if thou shalt diligently, Deuteronomy 28, please give it to us. Deuteronomy 28, if thou shalt diligently hearken, look up please. This is prophecy, the correct approach to prophecy. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to what? Observe and to Faith is not just hearing what God has said. Faith is doing what God says should be done to see that result. When the rich man came to Jesus, he said, Good master, what must I do to be saved? Apostle, the devourer is coming every time. I can't hold ten naira like this. It's as if there's a bag. Now, let me tell you this. I can stand as a man of God. Please watch this. We're going to pray shortly. I can stand as a man of God and God can show me a revelation. I can look at, for instance, come Sam, it's looking sharp and smart. Now watch this. You see how sharp and smart Sam is looking. Imagine that God opens my eyes. Now the way prophetic things are interpreted, you have to be spiritual and be grounded in the word to interpret them properly. Because God will open my eyes now. Do you know what I will see? I will see this. I will see Sam holding a basket and I will see water being poured in that basket and going down. That can be a template that God is showing me to mean that there is loss and wastage in his life. Are we together now? So he uses because God speaks in pictures. The Bible calls it similitudes. It is not only words. God speaks in pictures. So when I see that now, watch this. I can say, ah, Sam, all that I see, your finance is going down. You say, yes, it's true. Everything going down. You say, yes. You don't cover that basket just with a prophetic word. No. Remember the going down of the finances is a product of many decisions that he is taking. So the real captivity is the financial decisions. His understanding about God's methodologies as far as increase is concerned that affects and influences the decisions he's taking, that now authorizes this opportunist called the devourer to destroy him. 
So to really help Sam, after prophesying to him, I will say, Sam, I need to show you the conditions provided for by scripture to stabilize your finance. Number one, let's look at the spiritual laws you are breaking. Number two, let's look at the understanding. Let's look at what you are doing. You are not producing anything. You are not, you are not diligent. You are not exchanging anything for value. Number two, your reputation is making you to make bad decisions that are above and beyond your financial level. Now, you are closing that door permanently. Remember that knowledge and wisdom are stabilizers of destiny. When Sam goes back now, number one, he will pray and rebuke that spirit. But number two, he has now received a dimension of intelligence that teaches him that patience is godly. Are we together? That teaches him that it is all right to move small in life. If all you have is a shoe of 300 naira, it is not a mockery on your reputation. An understanding you had before called it shame. What you have now received calls it process. Because of that now, when the devourer comes as usual, a fortification has been built through knowledge. Now the prophecy of Sam, God is changing your life, can now happen. Because favor can now come. A system of preservation has come. This is how Sam is warring with this prophecy. Otherwise, Sam can kneel down and say, yes, sir, I will speak to him. The destiny helper will come and pour the same water into the same basket. So here's what happens in church. And I say this to churches and ministries like ours here that are apostolic and prophetic because many times we have little value for the exegesis of the word, bringing understanding to the saints, bringing illumination because of the charismatism around the demonstration of the spirit and the prophetic. Many times we, we feel embarrassed even as, ma as men of God to settle down and mature believers through the teaching of the word. We would prefer to just begin to move imagine that I, I i come here now and the power of god begins to break out i mean it's easy for you to see that this is that joshua selman you know the bible said this is that so when you bring a visitor you say i told you it will reach 10 minutes when he comes up you'll be flying I, you doubted me now you see it happening but sometimes when you sit down you see the way believers are embarrassed and ashamed when the word of God is taught you, you see that each I need something. When someone shouts, they start laughing. You know, it just it's like it just eases up because many people do not want to grow. We have taught that prophecy is a shortcut to destiny. No, prophecy is part of the requirements. Listen very carefully. It's part of the systems that were put by the wisdom of God for the building of the saints. Prophecy was not designed to replace obedience to God's set order. If I give you a book and I say study this book on church growth, and success and leadership and administration chances are you are going to throw that book away if i say come to me and i will receive just one touch how many touches one one touch you go back your cathedral will enter another dimension that prophecy will work if you have prepared your way like dotam before you come Dotham prepared his way before the lord if you have prepared your way you have done your assignment Oh, with, with Jesus' joy, that oil will come and set your life in order. Before the fire came, there was already a sacrifice prepared already. The fire would not come. The fire cannot come and be hanging in the air and say, oh, yeah, quickly prepare the sacrifice. You prepare the sacrifice first. There are some of you, the prophecy on your life requires a requisite level of transformation for it to come and since your rate of change is slow it will take a long time so when you say god help me god says i'm i'm ready to do it today if you will change to that dimension what do you understand about pastoring thousands of people what do you understand about the diplomacy of conflict management? What do you understand about leadership and administration? What do you understand about finance? What do you understand about impact and influence? What do you understand about preparing sermons? What do you understand about, 
about giving people an expression, growth. Just anoint me, oh God, don't worry about anything. Let me tell you what you will. You will produce a place with so many miracles that will depend on you. They will never be able to rise. This is the tragedy of the prophetic and the apostolic ministry. If I speak to you, Sam, and by tomorrow, someone gives Sam a house, a car, do you think next week Sam will come for Koinonia with speed? Sam will not even sit down there. He will sit down on the altar. Are you seeing that now? And then, the day, let's assume that this is a branch church. The day they now want to transfer me to go to the U.S., what do you think God will be telling Sam at that point? Sam will almost die that he had God. No. The emotional connect that comes by reason of the breakthrough he received through my life has made my voice look like the voice of God to him. And most often than not, God did not speak and tell him to go anywhere. He just examined the other replacement they brought. And the lazy nature of the man greeted the congregation. I said, no, I won't sit under this grace. Not at this strategic point of my life. And then he will get up and now begin to travel and go and meet me in the U.S. This guy's destiny has been wrongly attached to me. Are you seeing that now? To the point that this man can never know God by himself because the definition of christianity and breakthrough as proposed by me is that if you do not receive a prophetic word from me you are grounded you are dead you are finished my name is joshua selman and i'm telling you it's a lie if you take the word of god and believe it and walk within the principles that are kept in the word I repeat to you that no divination and no enchantment. If you are reading the word properly, there are places in the word that will lead you to go and look for men to pray for you. So you don't have to be afraid of being in error. Are we together? I continue to watch with frustration, sincerely speaking. As prophecies continue to be aborted in the lives of people and they blame men of God and continue to make negative prophecies to come to pass in their lives I told you respectfully so that in my entire paternal lineage sincerely I think aside from my dad by the grace of God, I'm the most successful person. Entire draw the line from anywhere till this. Can you imagine that kind of thing? I saw the spirit of failure and poverty and hardship in my family. You can be the greatest of anything, but live long enough, you must be the least. When I saw it, number one, I didn't deny it. I knew that the, if you deny it, that's another delay you are causing for yourself. The quicker you admitted it, the, the better for you. Just sit down, look at it and say, ah, okay, this is it. I see that there is problem here. But I made up my mind. I, I love the word of God. I found it too. I found it. See, I have set thee above thrones, dominions, Above all of this thing, every name that is named. I started seeing something here. Jesus, the prophet, started speaking to my destiny. And I had the foolishness to believe him. The childlikeness to believe him. I believed him so much so that I disbelieved every other thing I saw. And then the Holy Spirit guided me enough to know what are the conditions. What does it take to actualize this? And then he began to show me step by step. And I said, it may be painful, oh God. I may not be able to go through this myself, but supply the grace. And he says, my strength is perfected in your weakness. Look what he has done today. Apostle is lucky. 
they pray. I remember when they were prophesying that day. Was it not two of us? They prophesied over everybody in the meeting. That's what many people say. That's what many parents say. They look at many great men of God and say, ah, this guy, I, he was just lucky. I knew the meeting he got born again. The same altar call was made for everybody. One person responded, another person wished. Please make up your mind. Extraordinary fruitfulness will remain a dream. Did you hear what I said? There are people who are engaging with understanding and the results are showing. Extraordinary fruitfulness is not just, it will, December will come and for many people they will find out that nothing like extraordinary fruitfulness happened. But if someone makes up his mind like Timothy, that I'm going to war a good warfare, prophecy has been sent ahead of me. Lord, what do I need to do? show me your greatest prayer in this season can be is not just show me your ways lord show me the part i have to play show me what do i have to do oh god to change my financial story i've desired fresh oil i have fasted and i've prayed what is the key to the anointing what is the key to a mighty supply of the spirit upon a man I found out the key to keep the Holy Spirit close to a man because I knew that the nature of the ministry that God had committed to me would require a depth of intimacy and I didn't want theory Lord show me what keeps the Holy Spirit close to a man think of the risk that happens when he becomes far from you and don't let nobody lie to you that he cannot be far from you spirit of the living god i found him as the secret that he's an ever-present help in time of need but what do i need to do as the recipient thou shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it let me tell you this i trust god's way one of the secrets of my life is that i trust the way of god most of us have allowed education, intellect, to corrupt the potency of the ways of God. I believe God. I believe God. I remember when the Lord gave instructions here for miracle service. Foolishly and childishly. Did it. Everything he says to do, you do. When God declares anything here, we go after him foolishly. I remember a Jimmy here, he would tell you, when the Lord said to put some of the koinonia messages online, audio, audio message that is not very clear. People online, those of you who are social media experts know that people cannot spend two hours listening to something. They don't have that time. You break it into sections and someone sits down for two hours 30 minutes listening to volumes and volumes of a message my brothers and my sisters it is not let me tell you 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 will be shocked at the power of god that is released and the energy that prophecy carries when you align with it show me a man who has received a word from a prophet of god or has received a word from scripture and obtained grace from God to understand the requirements and do it. I show you a man who you're speaking against, you're cursing against, you're wishing against. is a waste of time. My confidence today in life and in ministry is on my determination to keep doing the things that allow to host the presence of God. My confidence today is to keep doing the things that continue to bring increase in my life and in the ministry. That way you can stand and beat your chest under God and know you have entered your Sabbath. Satan can come. Challenges can come. But you are as assured of victory 
as you are assured of Christ sitting on his throne. My life has no fear. I sincerely mean it because I have found out. I found how to commit God. You commit God in the affairs of your life by obtaining grace to know what to do. Jesus himself knew what to do. Buy the ingredients for jollof rice and bring somebody who does not know how to mix them. You have potential for rice. That's prophecy. But that rice will never, never be prepared there. At best, you are going to have nonsense prepared at rice. But then bring somebody who has taken out time to learn how to prepare rice and then bring the ingredients and within a short time as short as an hour you will see a delicious pot or plate of rice god is not withholding financial blessings from you the word has come if nobody ever spoke it to you scripture has already told you god is not withholding increase and influence from you something about your not understanding his ways may be responsible the irresponsibility of allowing prophecy work itself thinking it is spiritual is very dangerous from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain but when jesus walked upon the earth they tried to distract him and he said no 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 no. my meat is to do the will of him that has sent me jesus had an option to abort salvation when he was at Gethsemane, he cried and prayed. Can you take this cup off me? But he said, nevertheless, my will, not my will, but yours be done. And when he took that cross, it was not an angel carrying it. He was carrying it, feeling the weight. The moment he wanted to throw it, he remembered. He remembered. Man will not be grafted through me to be seated. I, 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 if I throw this now, I cannot call many sons to glory. Let me tell you this and I confess to you. There were times in my life when I would be walking through the night and sometimes I would just stop and a joy of the spirit will come over me because I saw the days coming. I knew that there were days of joy and rest and no pain at that point sustained an ability to interrupt my focus. I knew. I was trying to know the Holy Spirit Knowing the Holy Spirit is hard. Sometimes you want to sleep and he will just tell you to stroll. You will think you are going to pray for one hour. And you will just return to six in the morning. It's the price. While I am doing that, someone is seen in a vision that a young man is going to arise from the north. And he will carry the word and the life and the power of Jesus. That prophecy can remain in the realm of the spirit. When you do not partner with prophecy. Is God speaking? What have you not done that is making prophecy to not manifest in your life? What have you done to allow a negative prophecy come to pass in your life? Something was said. You saw it in a dream that the devil wants to oppress you. You saw it in a dream that an attack was coming to you and your children. You just got up and, and wrote it down. Usually that's what we do. I had a dream, 3.22 a.m. In that dream, I saw knife. I saw all of that. And you didn't do anything about it. Until six months after that time. Watch this. It will not come as a physical robber. Your prayer life goes down. Your finances goes down. All helpers leave you. What was working stops working. That was the dream. Prophecy seeking expression in your life. Like Hezekiah, there's something you would have done about it. Hey, everybody in this house, turn every plate upside down. I have seen something that is an evil. And we can stay the power away. And then you get up and pray. There are many things I see that the devil wants to bring upon people, upon the ministry, upon my life. There are people who send me text messages sometimes, Apostle, this is what I've seen. Pray about the ministry. I don't sit down and cross my legs. While you are sleeping and snoring, I'm awake with God, crying and praying. Lord, worship team. Lord, prayer department. Lord, this, there must be increase. People are coming. You are opening up doors. Prophecy. 
And he said, I saw it too. I saw that by this time, koinonia would have increased. Yes, you saw it, but it was engaged. Is someone getting the teaching this night? Because we are going to pray. You will never see the outstretched arm of God with the assumption that prophecy will work itself out. No. You have a dream and you see people dying in your family. That means there is a word that is bringing death. What do you do about it? You don't wait till somebody dies. Say, ah! And you know, I, I, the other day I told you, you are a witness. What kind of witness is that? You can get up and fast. Fasting is powerful, oh. Yes, listen to me. Our, our Ajebo generation, fasting is important for a man's destiny. You will never be able to do business with God if you cannot turn your plates upside down. There are times you need to sit like Elijah. You write the list of all the nonsense you saw that must change. One by one you are praying. What is this I saw about my wife? What is this I saw about my husband? What is this I saw about my business? I saw an attack. I, I'm sleeping and all of a sudden I have a dream. And in that dream I see chains everywhere. In that dream I see people crying. You don't need an interpretation. The character of scripture shows you that mourning is not associated with glory. So already let the Bible interpret that for you that is trouble. You can call somebody. I pray that you have a good friend. That when you need to change prophecy, he will be available with you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That you have a good friend that you say, please, can you stay awake for three hours with me today? I'm sensing the spirit of death over my family. I don't know, but I've been sensing it. And the person says, ah, you know, coincidentally, I had a dream of death. It shouldn't put fear. Your consolation is that the most sure word of prophecy has an ability to superimpose everything planned. And you can get up in the night and agree. And both of you are praying. How do you pray? You engage the truth of scripture. You don't pray and say, God, why now? Where are you? Is it that are you still there? That, that's not prayer. That's just lamentation. You begin to pray when you engage the truth of God's word. I choose life. I'm the head of this home. My children may be too small to choose life, but I stand as a covering. I choose life. When they are in school, I choose life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I've taught you this thing. Listen, if you are married in this place, young or old, you are a man. If you don't go around praying and laying hands on your children, you are not a very good ambassador of this ministry. The children should be sleeping. Don't go, you are not a father because they serve you plate and you are sitting down. You get up and carry that regalia of priesthood. You are changing negative prophecies. Your child comes back with a result from second position to twelfth. The other one from 4 to 18. You don't just flog them. No. Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. This is prophecy now. That delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty. This is not might. Lord, you have said my seed shall be mighty. Shekakoska. Manda prakatoselekata. While you are speaking that word, there are powers, let me tell you, that reside in the heavenlies. You speak and command your morning. He told Job, Has thou commanded thy morning? You, are, you, are, you sleep and wake up with a dream. Someone injects you with HIV and tells you this is HIV. You get up and say, And you know, I'm feeling the spot. You get up and see marks on your body, physical marks from a dream. And you sit down and just laugh. Laugh? No matter how mad a man is, he does not enter fire by mistake. As mad as he is, he comes near fire, he will move. I'm not that mad. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell under the shadow of your wings. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind we want to dwell 
under the shadow of your wing over every challenge in my life blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wing blow blow say Listen, everything you see in your dream is prophecy, seeking manifestation, good or bad. Everything you see in your dream, in your vision is a prophecy, seeking manifestation. You can allow it, you can change it, you can stop it. Inaction is a disaster to a believer. Is what you don't want that you will see happen. Can you open your mouth in one minute and just blast in the spirit? Shabaranda Parukoto Sopreketa Galekata Hallelujah. Listen, listen, please look at me. One of the demands of priesthood, get my message on priesthood, is that men become men of prayer. Not just prayer in terms of petition, but legislators of spiritual reality. Anything you sit and watch will happen. Did you hear what I said? Listen, there was no record of Job praying for himself. There was no record of any man praying for Job. The devil came through him and through his covering to afflict his family. He prayed for his children. It's true that he feared God. It's true that he ensured evil. But that's not the seed for deliverance. You must know how to pray and engage. Listen, let me tell you. Let the devil get used to you not keeping quiet when negative things come. Don't say I'm not a member of prayer band. I'm not a member of this and that. The times that we live in, let me tell you, it requires men with the spirit of Issachar. It's a man who had an understanding of the times. Otherwise, you can confess I shall not die and death will sweep you like a chicken. You must have the eyes that see. Lift your voice and begin to pray. I change everything that is not consistent with the counsel of God concerning my life, my family, my finances. Please pray, pray. I change everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Every prophecy that is not of God seeking manifestation through my life I reject you by the power of the Holy Ghost I reject you I speak the word the most sure word of prophecy I shall not die but leave the head not the tail above only not beneath Shabarakatosh Embra kata 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 Shabarus kabaria kata ni kata Pray
Rakatakata, in Rakatakata, that's a break at the book. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Now, listen, I'd like you to find someone to agree with you. Everything God said, or you have seen in the spirit that is consistent with God's will and has been hanging by any power of divination within the second heavens lift your voice and cry I command that it must come to pass I war a good warfare in the realm of the spirit I decree and I declare the joy the peace the prosperity the blessings the anointing upon my ministry upon my life I declare the powers of the heavens holding everything that belongs to me. I command the release by the power of the word of God. I believe this. I believe that God is a healer. I believe he's a deliverer. I believe when men lose things, they can get it back. Yes, sir. Including time. Including time. I believe that when men lose things, they can get it back. I believe God can anoint ordinary men. Men who are just available. But the level of grace is not there. But I know there is a place a man can come to where you encounter the power of God. Everywhere is not the same. No. God is everywhere, but he does not manifest his power everywhere. I believe in the power of God. I was sent not only to reveal his face, but to reveal his power. To let men know that he's still alive. To correct misunderstandings about God. Please listen to me. I want to charge your faith before we pray. I believe that challenges can end. I believe that problems can end. Did you hear what I said? I believe a man can sit down and search left and right and only see the goodness of God. I believe it. I believe it. I believe prosperity is real. I don't believe prosperity destroys a Christian. I believe in the blessing of the Lord. I believe in what it can do to your family. I believe in what it can do to your children. I believe in what it can do to your health. I know poverty causes sickness. I know it causes worry. Nobody will preach into embracing nonsense. No. I believe a man can prosper even as his soul prospers. I believe in speed. I believe God can compress what should happen in five years in one month. I truly believe it. I truly believe it. I believe God can restore time. When a woman has been barren for seven years, if she gives birth to one baby, we thank God, but it's not a statement enough. When she gives birth to triplets, God took nine years of space in three, three years and compressed it in one year. Now, that's victory over time. The hardiness of the hearts of men will require some dimensions of results to break their pride to honor God. Please listen, let me tell you. We are not going to use stories and noise to get people to Jesus. Wealth is a weapon. The anointing is a weapon. Favor is a weapon. Mercy is a weapon. Wisdom is a weapon. What are you fighting with? Desire, you will not win. It takes you being equipped with the spiritual arsenals that have been made for the victory of the saints in light. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. I believe a man can weary the devil 
to a point where he will let you go. I believe you can live in a territory and create your own climate financially, spiritually. I believe it. Listen, out of everything I'm saying, throw away the ones you don't believe and open your heart to the ones you believe. I believe a believer can serve God better in an atmosphere of comfort. When your children's school fees are paid, you will serve God better. Don't let religion come with the pride of men and pretend that it does not matter. Yes, I know that none of these things should affect our love for God. But let me tell you the truth. There is a level of pain you continue to have that can harden your heart towards God. It takes time to know God. It takes time to serve God. And that's the time the devil does not want to give you. You will never have time to serve God when you are moving around chasing money. You will never have time to serve God when you are moving around lobbying a way to, to be lifted. Vain is the help of man. People of God, please hear me. God did not gather us tonight to waste our time. He gathered us tonight to make real the things in our lives that pertain unto life and godliness. Can I tell you this? Whether you believe in what I said or not, it does not change the truth. The truth was buried. It took only three days. It came out. So whether you believe in the truthfulness of what is said or not, you embrace poverty and see what it does to your life and your family. Embrace mediocrity and see what it does. Embrace sickness and see how much you will spend per week. Your entire resources, when you are finally broke, then the person will die. Is that sickness? Why will it ten, take 10 years to build one house? Is that a testimony? A prostitute will sleep with a man overnight and wake up by the next day with estates and houses and everything. Let's be careful the things we say about God because many of them are not true. Please hear me, especially for our precious visitors. Don't magnify your challenges and come hoping God will change your life. We are talking God here, not a doctor, not a consultant, not an architect, not a monarch, the God of the universe. You may not be sick in your body, but who told you he cannot change your life? Do you not know he's called the father of spirits? That God can speak to a man while you are here and compel him to bless you. That God can give you a dimension of grace that you didn't enter this building with. And you turn back and on Sunday, you climb your pulpit as usual. And suddenly, fire. A new dimension of grace. Do you believe in what I'm sharing? If you being evil, know how to give good gifts. Let me tell you, you can hold on to the hands of God. And say, it was never about your hands. It was about your heart. But tonight... I need your hands too. In addition to your heart. Step in over my life. Step in. Please don't give up on God. Wake up. Don't give up on God. Don't come here hoping. I've waited, waited. The God of heaven can compress time. If you don't believe all this, there's no point being here tonight. Because we are going to pray. And you must insist that tonight is not the night when I will clap for anybody. I came to mean business with my destiny. Listen. When we begin to pray, I'd like you to insist that anything that does not bring glory to God in your life must leave this night. No matter what it is. Some of you may need to rewrite your prayer request again. Because of your pain, you've stopped writing some things. 
you just concluded that God, this one, just, just leave this issue. No. When it was time to resurrect Lazarus, he said, roll away the stone. Roll away the stone. Prove that you believe in resurrection by rolling away the stone. Two things men did. They rolled away the stone and they lose the man. What if they lose Lazarus and they found out he was not alive or he just fell and collapsed? Your destiny must open up tonight. It's not a blessing for people to doubt. The Bible says to be diligent in these things, to prove your calling and election, to make it sure. There are things that must be in your life to validate your call and your election. If you're a man of God here, trust God for grace, for God's sake. Just go and stand before people and just open a scripture and speak and close it and say, let's pray. No. That's what the scribes did all the time. But Jesus came and opened and read the messianic prophecy. And he said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. They thought they would share the grace. He closed it and he told the guy with the withered hand. He said, stretch your hands. These things I write to you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Not teach alone. Do and teach. Can we pray? Please find a serious neighbor. And I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. The gift is only given to them that ask. God cannot assume you desire it. Please lift your voice in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. Outside, pray. Those following online, pray. Lord, visit me. Lord, visit me. Appear to me by your word as it were in Shiloh. Pray over your ministry. Pray over your business. Pray over your career. Pray over your destiny. Lord, I came that the gates be open tonight. Pray. Pray. That devil must leave my destiny today. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Pray, pray, don't look around. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Place something upon my life, oh God. Place something upon my destiny, upon my business upon my church Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. And the Lord will set this place on fire. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Read with me please if you are a believer. One, two, read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. 
And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Lord, do to me as you have spoken. You said many things about my life. Do it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. Do to me as you have spoken. You said I am the head and not the tail. Do to me. You said with favor shall you encompass me as a shield. Do to me. You said you will restore the years the canker worm has eaten. Do to me, O oh God. Pray, do to me, O oh God. Visit my family. You said you will wipe away every tear. You call 2019 my year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Do to me as you have spoken. Do to me, O God. You said I will have my child in 2019. Do to me as you have spoken. look up I want you to receive every grace that the Lord is going to be releasing in this place because you see let me tell you every grace supplied to you is the strength to survive the squallow of any season and if you do not obtain the requisite level of grace for any season you will find out that your life will remain barren and unfruitful. Truly, I came, I came with all my heart tonight. I, I don't want it to be a miracle service that we just play around casually. Please believe for something to come upon your life. Believe for a grace to come on your life. See, this thing about anointing, if it's not there, it's not there. Period. Very simple. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray 
I'll stand tonight praying on the grace for speed. Hold on, hold on. Please listen. There is a reason why I continue to say this. Many destinies are too slow to glorify God. Are we together now? When the devil cannot keep you at a standstill, then your progress will be so slow. It is said, I must walk the walks of him while it is day. That means I need to gain time. It says, for the night cometh when no man will walk again. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, there is a real grace for speed. If you have not seen it, it's because it's not on your life. There is a real grace for speed that vetoes the sentiments of men. So I want to pray. I want to start from there. And then we just allow the Lord to take us. Be conscious of what comes upon you. Be conscious of what comes upon you. That's how God answers prayers. He answers prayers by putting something on your life. That will compel creation to begin to act in a way and a manner that will change your life. Are we together? Please lift your hands and let me pray. I believe in the grace for speed. I have seen a measure of that grace. And I know it is true. That God can shift a man. I'm going to pray and release this grace and inside and outside that anointing and the anointing works let me just tell you the anointing works you will see people begin to run it's it's not anything superstitious it is just the character and the operation of that anointing we need it the Lord put it in my heart we need it for our businesses ministries and so on and so forth Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare right now, inside and outside, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I declare right now at the count of three, let this grace for speed that you have provided even for this season, let it rest on people now. I release that grace. Take that grace now. Please bring them out. Take that grace now, inside, outside, everywhere. I activate the operation of this grace. I shift your life in the name of Jesus to strange dimensions in the spirit. Receive the grace for speed. Receive the grace for Receive that grace for speed in the name of Jesus. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab to Jezreel. I command speed, 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 speed. Bring them out. Speed. Hey, labor, help that woman, please. My God. Hey, la parus kamana katashikata. Emprakato selekete prakatos. Hey, landa braskati shalakatos. I'm still praying. In the name of Jesus. It says, ye have encompassed this mountain for too long. Turn ye northward. I prophesy again. Like, like, like fire from heaven. Let that grace for speed mantle a family now. Not just an individual. Let it come upon families. Families receive speed. I shift you. Hebereko toshatalikata. I shift you in the spirit. New level. Speed. Speed. Bring them out. Speed. You will never be the same. Never be the same. I'm not praying for individuals now. I'm praying for families. Any family stagnated here. I stand by the power of the Holy Ghost. And I prophesy speed inside and outside i release speed right now
Now the Lord is that spirit, he says. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing chains on people's legs. Chains. And the Lord is saying, the Lord is bringing deliverance now. I'm seeing chains. If you are under this category as I'm praying now, the fire of God, I'm seeing fire moving, but not on people's heads, on people's feet. I decree and declare, is it not written that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. At the count of three, anyone whose destiny has been pegged by these chains, I declare be free now. Be free now. Let the power of God come upon you. Be free now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. I want to pray. God, I'm telling you, I'm seeing, this is, I'm still seeing it. Chains. You see, let me tell you this. Look up. Look up. The Bible tells us that there are many things that should happen where the spirit of the Lord is. One of it is liberty. Do you know what liberty is? It's a separation between you and the obstacle that mocks God in your life. There is such a thing in the dealings of God with men. As giving men liberty. I want to pray. There will be a mighty deliverance right now. Many of you, this is what has plagued your life. If it is true that victory was wrought on the cross, then it's time to establish it now. Please listen to me. Just follow with the instructions. Be childlike in your heart and let God give you a testimony. Are we together now? He said, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears, sowed weed among the, I meant, uh, uh, among the, 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 the wheat. And we are going to destroy everything. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. I'm going to pray and at the count of three, I will ask you to shout that name. My God. I don't know what kind of bondage I'm seeing this night. But except God is not God, you must be free. Right now in the name that is above all names. I pray for individuals and families alike. It is true that there are yokes and ordinances of darkness. That have held men bound. But in the name of Jesus everywhere here overflow one two three outside as you shout that name that is above all names i decree and declare that everything that is not the planting of god in your life and family must jump out of your destiny at the count of three one two three shout jesus i command forces and yo go now go now Release destiny. Release destiny. Ela baraka toshe pekeretos. Heli abrados kepereketos. Every ordinance that is not the planting of God, let it go now. Let it go now. I'm speaking by what I'm seeing in the spirit. Let it go now. I'm seeing a vision of a man with a handkerchief wiping the tears of a woman and I know that this is, is symbolic because the woman stands for the bride, the church and I'm seeing the Bible says he will wipe away every tear. I don't know what family and what person came here crying. But the Bible says to comfort they that mourn. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let an anointing come upon your life now. That terminates everything that brings tears. That terminates everything that brings tears.
bring them out. Hallelujah. Young lady, please shift this one. You, lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh eh Oh yeah yeah say Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah Yahweh Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say My friend, lift your hands. This, yes, you. The Lord is granting you the spirit of revelation. I saw something come upon your eyes, and the Lord is saying He's taking you to dimensions of revelation. Let her go now. Now, release her family. Now, in the name of Jesus. Please listen. I, I know that we don't have time, but please, I want you to, every time the Lord shows me this, then I know that he wants me to move around. I begin to see lights, a similitude of angels by my left and right. And it's, it's, a, very, it's a very mysterious way that God moves to touch people. When this begins to happen, all I need to do is you don't have to touch me, just move around your road. Listen to me, except God is not God. As he has anointed, as I pass your row, if there is anything that is not of God, it must let you go. Are we together now? So please, you pray. The moment we do that, then we'll begin to minister to the sick. These things are signs and wonders. They are supernatural. They are supernatural even by the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Please... I just want you to believe by faith just believe by faith and then as i pass the lord is going to touch you it will be the end of it's not something you can do anything about you are under the influence of the anointing are we together now thank you jesus that everything that is not of god must give way in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare right now by the power of the holy spirit let there be liberty now liberty now in the name of jesus madam be free i take it out of your life now the hand of god is upon you in the name of jesus christ receive the lord is touching you i'm seeing god's taking something out of someone's stomach here is going now now i release it now be free now be free now be free now in the name of jesus be free now i'm seeing fire rising from this road just from i don't know who it is but fire is coming on someone from this road Right now, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare.
Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Something is leaving you. I'm standing here. There is the power of the Holy Spirit is setting someone free here within this place right now in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 In the name of Jesus. Help that woman, please. She's holding a baby. In the name of Jesus Christ. I stretch my hands here. Everything that must leave anyone, I declare it must go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Please, all of you here, just lift your hands. Right now, I stretch my hands. Now, something is coming on people right here. Be free now. 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 Keep praying. Lift your voice. Overflow one. Keep praying. Something is about to change in your life now. Please, you don't have to touch me. And I want you to help everybody close to you. As I pass, the anointing of the Spirit is touching everything that needs to leave. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. 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 That anointing is touching you right now be free be free be free be free i take it out of you right now the fire of the holy spirit right here where i'm standing right here where i'm standing the lord is taking something out of your life be free i'm standing here and the lord is saying it is over he's speaking to someone it is over an anointing is coming on you now. It is over. 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 Shalakata. Over. Madam, be free now. The power of God is touching someone here. In the name of Jesus, be free. In the name of Jesus, be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Please help them. Help your neighbor so they don't injure themselves. Be free now. In the name of Jesus. I declare and declare be free. be free, be free, be free. Every devil of darkness, be free now. Please open your heart and receive. Stretch my hands here. Anything that is held, be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. I'm seeing a chain, a chain around here. I don't know who that person is, but I lose you now. As I stand here, I lose you now. By the spirit of the living God, I lose you now. I lose you now. Hallelujah. Overflow one. I don't know if I'm able to walk around. It's working now. Please believe. It's a few minutes. God is touching you. You came here so that he will visit you. It's impossible to not testify. Now, please look at me overflow too. I'm not going to pass in your midst. I will walk right here. And as I walk, the power of the Holy Spirit will begin to touch you. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. Be free now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, now, now. Be free. I take away every reproach. I take away every reproach. You can't stand it. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. We're talking of the anointing here. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. I stretch my hands here. Go now. Go now. Every reproach. Sela kaparato siketa. Hela endebraska lakatosh. Every reproach, go now, go now. I release your destiny. All of you standing here, I'm passing now. The power of God is coming on you. Be free. Praise the Lord. Okay, um, I'm going to walk around. I may not go row by row. Please let your heart be open. Please accept God is not God. 
whatever it is that has held you as I pass by the spirit the power of God comes on you some of you will be receiving impartation it's not everybody that is going to just be free from whatever it is father in the name of Jesus honor your word right now in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Jesus right now before I may not be able to move, but please lift your hands. All of you, at the count of three, overflow three, let me hear you shout the name Jesus. The moment you shout that name, I'm seeing like, I'm seeing like fire coming out of people. This is something living people. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. From the front to the be free now in the name of Jesus. I release your destiny now. I release your destiny now. Madam, look at me. I set her free now. Release her destiny right now. That woman you are holding. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I declare to you. I, I release speed inside. I want to pray that prayer now. I don't know what has slowed you down. Overflow three. From the front to the back. May the grace for speed come on you now. May the grace for speed come on you now. Please, whether you're an usher or not, whether you're an usher or not, help anybody under the anointing close to you. In the name of Jesus, I don't know what has held your destiny bound, but in the name of Jesus, one more time, I want you to shout the name Jesus at the count of three. One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. You came for a miracle service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look at me. Overflow 3, look at me. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a family. I will soon walk out, but I just want you to know you are part of and that it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. The Lord is showing me a family here. There is a plague of sickness. Everybody from father to the last child. There is nobody who is fine. Right now as I'm speaking, the power of God is coming upon that family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Overflow 3. I'm seeing the number 21. This is the healing anointing coming on 21 people. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. This is not a healing miracle. This is the anointing to heal. Right now, from the front to the back, upon gentlemen and upon ladies, receive that grace. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Please, everyone, overflow. One, two, three, main auditorium. Please open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit and declare that everything the Lord is doing must find expression in your life. Lift your voice and pray.
Please lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice and pray. 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 Voice and pray. God is changing something in someone's body. A blood disease. Just right where I'm standing. A blood disease is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, let me tell you, when, when we do these things, we are not wasting time at all. You need to see what the Lord um, did in some of those overflows. There are people who have real issues and sometimes, Madam, please lift your hands. I'd like you to shout Jesus as loud as you can. Let the name of the Lord be praised. The spirit of prayer. When I was in overflow three, I saw that grace. Would do an impartation, but it's in this season. There is a spirit of prayer and supplication that is coming upon the body of Christ, especially in Zaria. There is a spirit and there is a grace for prayer. In the name of Jesus. Take that grace now. There is a grace and there is a spirit of prayer that is coming upon the body of Christ. You don't pray just by self-will. There is an agency. I declare now in this main auditorium, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, I stand by the spirit and I declare receive a baptism of this spirit. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. I declare capacity in your spirit man. Capacity. I swing open the door for utterance in prayer. Grace to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone in the media stand is receiving a baptism of the spirit of prayer a fresh grace a baptism of prayer hallelujah you see let me tell you this please listen one of the systems for enforcing dominion on earth is the ability to legislate in the place of prayer and when the saints cannot pray and pray with understanding then nothing will change within their territory an attack on your prayer life is a real attack on your spiritual life nobody prays out of convenience there is a grace that must come upon a man to pray Hallelujah. If you are in ministry, I pray again for the grace for prayer. Let me tell you, if you are a man of God and you are not a man of prayer, you are not in ministry. Believe me, you are not in ministry. It's only a matter of time you will know you are not in ministry. I decree and declare a supply of the Spirit, an ability from heaven upon men and women of God that anyone who has the call of God upon his life whether you know it or not, the grace to pray, take it now. 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 The grace to travail, not give me tea and bread, not give me tea and bread, to pray destiny altering prayers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll quickly minister to the sick now. Um, please listen. For those of you who are coming for the first time, we usually 
take prayer requests that I pray for now. And if you have not written your prayer request, please do so. You can get a notebook or just beckon on someone by your left and right to just give you an opportunity to write. While we are doing that, please, um, I will minister to those overflow one. Okay, the main auditorium and overflow two. Please listen. Main auditorium and overflow two. Um, when I ask you to come, you will come and stand in front here. You will be ministered to right here. Overflow one, you will stand in front of your projector stand. That away from the canopy to allow for space. Now, um, will I call it overflow 2B now? The overflow that extends to second equa. Someone will come there to minister. All those who are trusting God for healings, protocol ushers, please just coordinate them. You will stand in front there and then overflow three. Um, okay, there's another overflow down towards overflow three. Um, they will join the ones at they will join the ones at um, the second equa area. So let that be a single overflow too. And then finally, overflow three. You can walk to the front of your projector stand. All of you who desire to be prayed for. We believe in the healing power of Jesus. I believe in miracles. And our time is gone. You'll be ministered to very fast. And then we'll tidy up other things. Whilst that is going on, please, we're trying to conserve time. You see that a, a standard miracle service has to really be a vigil. If you want to do a thorough walk. You're not going to be able to do a thorough walk within two or three hours. But we're trying to just do the best we can do with the time that we have. While you are coming out, please, ushers, PR, join them or any other department um, to collect the, the prayer request. Those online, you can connect by faith if you're trusting God for healing and you can submit your prayer request and then it will be prayed for here. Praise the Lord. I believe in miracles. If you have written your prayer request, um, the ushers or you'll find a few people who will lift up their hands or lift up baskets and you'll be allowed to put it there. Now, very quickly, those trusting God to be ministered to um, for any kind of healing, make your way out quickly. Just like I've designated, please quickly, you come stand here by faith. Overflow one in front of your projector stand. Overflow three in front of your projector stand. Overflow two. You can join um, those in the main auditorium here. I hope I'm doing the right thing. And then overflow 2B and 2C, let me call it now. 2B extending to second equa and 2C extending to the gate of the third overflow. All of you together will form one overflow and then we'll minister very, very fast. Very, very fast so that we can finish. While you are doing that, please... Please let me advise, especially for those outside, as you are walking out, make sure your phones, your bags, and any of your belongings is safe. And then help those under the anointing. God is delivering people, setting people free. And let's just let him be God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Accept the people ministering to you, ask you questions. Don't worry. Just a touch and then you'll be back to your seat and check yourself whether you're on a wheelchair or on a crutch or sitting whatever the situation is whilst they touch and they minister just expect a miracle hallelujah father we give you praise in the name of jesus within the time we have we pray that your healing power will flow let the sick be healed transform our lives visit us in a new way glorify jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let incurable situations live. And I pray, God, that you give your people testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Nigeria,
taking away the pain. You make my life so beautiful. My beautiful, you are taking away the shame, taking away the pain, and you make me just like you. My beautiful, my beautiful, hey, you're taking away the shame, taking away the pain. These are the guys that came from um, where? You came from Thailand. This gentleman is a professional footballer. Where's your colleague? Where are you? Come. We salute your coming. Both of them are professional footballers. What happened to your legs? Our last league match last year, so I got a fracture from it. And from there, it's affected your career. You're a footballer too. You came all the way from Thailand. You believe Jesus will heal you? These are your, you see, you cannot, I don't even know what this, this does. I asked to stop because they are, we're having some interesting cases today. Please shift. God is doing a serious miracle for this lady. Said she had, is it ovarian cancer? Ovarian what? Something like that. Mama? Oh dear. Look what God is doing. She will be healed, eh? Amen. Mm. Because when I looked at her, I did not see a pregnancy. I saw something that looked like a mass of something. This is demonic. Huh? Where are you from, madam? Where did you come from? From I'm from Kano. From Kano? Yes. Jesus, look what is happening. Let her be healed now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, don't cry. Cancer, I speak to you. You have a name, you have a voice. Release this lady now. In the name of Jesus. My friend, look at me. You came all the way from Thailand. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the living God. This fractured leg, I fix it back now. You see what is happening to you? What do you feel happening to you? Huh? Look at me. Go, run. Don't mind them just focus on me if you're having pain we're not acting here huh? so if you're having any a miracle has happened to you when i held your leg i felt the power of god moving through you you see this thing you see is a very demonic thing it's not about fracture do you understand number one come my friend you're together too i want to pray for you you see god is looking for people to represent him in every sphere huh? just because you are footballers doesn't mean that you ignore God. Many footballers don't love Jesus. They love football and they love the money that comes with it. But we are not only here. God has perfected this. Let me pray on the x-ray, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this miracle remain forever. Amen. I want to pray for both of you. I will, I will see you after the service and just say hi since you came just to honor you. But listen to me. I'm sure I don't know you. I've never seen you. Can I prophesy on your career? In the name of Jesus, 
the son of the living God. From today, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You are a footballer, but you play by the anointing, my friend. It takes more than just kicking a ball. I release the grace to excel. And for you, I release the grace to excel. Right now, two of you will return back to Thailand and the Lord will honor you. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Thank you so much for your patience. We're about to pray on the requests. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I truly believe that as we pray on these requests, that every situation that has defied God, it must answer to the name of the Lord. Let her go now. I curse you by the God of heaven. Out now! Who else? Praise the Lord. Please let's rise. Thank you for your patience. It's a miracle service. If you are yet to submit your request, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Hallelujah. We have gotten all kinds of humbling testimonies from this revelation. This is this is a revelation that God gave as a communication of his love and the depth of his desire to see people touched. Not everybody can be prophesied to, not everybody may be personally ministered to but this is a representation of your pain is a representation of your expectation and please i want you to believe release your faith you may not have come out requiring healing and with all the ministrations you may not have been directly ministered to i want you to believe because this is representing you before god i want you to stretch your hands here and pray passionately Pray passionately. You're not done. That Lord, this that I'm bringing before you, this will be the last. I truly believe. Make sure we collect for those outside. If you are still being ministered to, no problem. You can just focus while. You are receiving hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord i'm seeing fire burn on this thing i wanted to go down on my knees but i just saw fire burning and the lord said i should declare and speak over it I'll declare and speak over it um there is one gentleman and one lady one gentleman one lady the power of God is coming on two of them. The moment that happens, then I have the release to speak on this. These are signs and wonders, my precious people. Sometimes God does these things and we have no idea why he does them. A gentleman and a lady. This is the sign that God gave me. Now I'm ready to pray in the name of Jesus. Believe with me. I stand upon this request now and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, every request laid before god here i decree and declare it lives your life forever please believe please believe we are believers in the mighty name of jesus christ hear me the bible says these egyptians you see today he said you will see them no more forever therefore i declare that everything that defied the name of the lord represented here i declare it is buried now and forever every impossible situation written here situations that men do not have the ability to produce or provide i call on the god of heaven the creator of the ends of the earth in the name of jesus let there be supernatural miracles supernatural miracles 
let there be supernatural miracles that time we had not started this a woman who had been barren for eight years wrote a request then we had not started this i'm not sure i, I think koinonia just started and when it was brought to me one of our precious ladies she used to be in the media and i held and i just heard that it was done in the spirit and i said that was it and the woman had three plates one two three now that's not the miracle the miracle is that none of the child had any kind of issue whatsoever three of them are alive today i have seen them they are strong they are fine the bible says that everybody who ministers should minister according to the measure of grace when you attempt something higher than your level of anointing except god instructs you it is pride we understand our spiritual jurisdictions there are things that you have there are things you may not have now in experience I want to pray for you there is most of the requests here it is favor that will produce it listen listen many requests that we are writing whether it's a whole notebook you could as well get a clean sheet of paper and just write one word favor and that would be it it would still be worth it they are just different versions of expressing your need for favor i want to pray that grace there is a real grace for favor in the name of jesus christ favor listen favor is not having money favor is access to the hearts of men it's more than money you can have money and not be favored the proof of favor is not just money the proof of favor is the loyalty of men in the name that is above all names i decree and declare let the grace for favor rest upon you now let it bring about the accomplishment of this request in the mighty name of jesus There are requests written here. It is mercy that will answer it. The Bible says, even the lawful captive shall be delivered. I declare mercy upon this request. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I stand representing the desires, the pain of your people. You have done it again and again, and we will never take you for granted lord let it please you that everyone who has submitted a request may they have the opportunity to stand upon this altar to testify in the name of jesus christ the spirit that brought the need for these requests i banish them from your life in the name of jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ may it please the Lord that testimonies will come out of this now please lift your hands we're closing let me speak over your life it is always my honor to do this because I have seen the creative power of the Word of God I've seen its ability to turn to change to transform lives there was a very humbling testimony something a gentleman this is something that happened like last week I thought he would come and share maybe he would come down to Zaria and testify himself that's why I didn't say it he walks in somewhere like a factory or something and he's given the key to the warehouse now i don't know what kind of carelessness happened whether his friends or whatever this gentleman just misplaced 
the key and these are very serious security keys it's not like something you just carry a stone and hit and buy another one and it became a serious issue for him and they threatened to call the police they threatened to do a lot of things and i was about to sleep when i got his text he had been calling and i said please send the text and he sent it and i looked at it and he said i'm about to lose my job my wife my children this and that and suddenly the anointing of the spirit came upon me on my bed i laid hands and i sent him a text i said find that key that's all i wrote god is my witness i will not stand here at this level and corner stories this gentleman said he just was listening to a koinonia message and he slept i'm telling you the truth under god and he saw me in a dream this is what he said i was not there he saw me giving him the key in a dream he woke up in the morning listen listen that's not a miracle he woke up in the morning opened his drawer and the key was there <laughs> truly speaking you see let me tell you this if you are struggling to believe this you are not a christian because the very foundation of christianity was a strange miracle that a spirit leaves his body and returns back at will please let's not limit god i say these things to challenge us these versions of unbelief we continue to endorse is not going to make our lives fruitful you have nothing to lose to stretch your faith all the way don't they limited god in the wilderness by saying can god make a way hallelujah what is strange about an angel of the lord coming to drop a key somewhere didn't you hear the testimony of the gentleman who a stranger called him and gave him a number he shared here you remember gave him a number he calls a general in the army and they say who gave you my number and he doesn't know who gave him his number bottom line he gets a job as a result look let me tell you there is nothing god cannot do i'm praying for you the dimension of testimonies that will it will shock you the testifier first receive it now receive that strange order of testimonies In the name of Jesus Christ. A gentleman here, one of the years, checked his name on admission list and clearly saw that he didn't get anything. He frowned his way to his father who said, you are a foolish son, I'm not surprised. And he came, I don't know if it was miracle service or one of the prayers, returns back to the board and checks and there is his name admission list see let me tell you this let me tell you this you you are liberty to not believe but don't say it's a lie just say i don't believe based on my work with god and based on what i have not seen but don't say it's a lie he told nathaniel you will see greater things than this jesus said it are we together strangers that must arise and step in over your issue in the name of Jesus I connect you to them I connect you to them I connect you to them by the power of the Holy Spirit there are times you have the gift but you do not have access to the ears of the kings you will need those who are already in the palace otherwise Joseph you will remain in the prison I pray for you. Whoever has access to the ears of your helper, may God compel them to speak about you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for everyone trusting God for a job. In the name that is above all names, please believe. And by the power that is in the name of Jesus, I declare that between now and August, by the grace and the name of the Lord, return with a miracle job.
Hallelujah. I pray for those in ministry. The fire that must come on a man. John Wesley says, set yourself on fire and the world will come to watch you burn. I decree and declare, may that fire come upon your life. Every dying business in this place, hear the word of the Lord. I speak to you, come back to life now. And to live to deliver those appointed to death there are people appointed to death I heard a man of God give a story of a gentleman who missed a flight he missed a flight and the plane crashed and everybody was happy he missed the flight they didn't know he followed a train that crashed are we together you miss a flight and you are saying Lord I give you praise you enter a train and you die these are people appointed to death in the name of Jesus death is a spirit it has a voice it can hear I forbid the earth from receiving your body in the mighty name of Jesus Christ every family under financial captivity every family here and every individual sincerely trusting God to come through for you financially I pray for you may the month of June be your month please believe me may the month of June be your month let the hand of God let the grace of God rest upon you God causing all grace to abound towards you may you have sufficiency in the name of Jesus Christ. Every project you have in front of you, whether it is a building project, whether it's a spiritual growth project, whether it's a ministry expansion project, whether it's a business project, it says the hand of Zerubbabel that began this work, that same hand will complete it. I pray. In the name of Jesus, whatever project you have, the grace to execute it, let it be given to you now. I don't know what has destroyed your appetite for the word of God. You will open your Bible and look at it like this, like a storybook. You can read a book of 600 pages in one week, but you can hardly finish one page of the Bible is an attack I decree and declare let the spirit of revelation and a passion for the Word of God may it rest upon you may it rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ two more prayer points and we're done hearing is our father glorified that ye bear much fruit the grace for results is called the power of performance receive that grace now I speak to you produce results produce results repeated results predictable results in every area of your life be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ Finally, let me pray for you. Everything that is alive grows. When you give birth to a child and he cannot walk after three years, no teeth, he can't talk, you know that something is wrong with that child. Are we true? Your destiny is like a child. If it is alive, then it should grow. When a tree grows and begins to mature, it begins to branch are we together now and then it starts to invite the birds it also invites men to come and partake of the fruit i don't know what has taunted your growth in life and in destiny but as we cap up this month's miracle service especially your spiritual life some of you you've not backslidden but sincerely you've been at the same level it's not like you've gone down as it were but you've just rotated around the same experience I declare rise to a new level rise to a new level 
rise to a new level thank you Jesus thank you Jesus let me encourage you listen make sure to pay attention to the testimonies that God gives you and be sure to make it a duty to testify let it not be a burden to you are not testimonies don't just endorse that a man of God is anointed testimonies are proof to men to creation to all and sundry that God is love and that he is still mighty testimonies are a tool that consolidates the convictions of men and creates the same in others it's important to not withhold testimony someone's faith is depending on the miracle that comes from releasing your faith so be sure that as God touches you you may not have the luxury of coming down to Zaria for those of you who are far but we're on various social media platforms you can always make your testimonies known and then you can contact our helplines and then someone will be there to document your testimony and it will edify the people of God praise the Lord still standing everyone our time is gone I want to make an altar call I believe in salvation listen it matters that in a crowd of people like this and many more connected around the world it matters that we give people an opportunity to encounter Jesus let's settle down please let me have your attention let me your attention for a minute or two you are here in the main auditorium overflow one overflow two and all the auxiliary overflows overflow three and online and you know that you are yet to truly surrender your all to Jesus and receive of his life or there are others who are saying apostle I have given my life to Jesus but I need to rededicate my life to start a work with him that is truthful and serious wherever you are and whatever category you belong to our time is gone just one minute for this aside from overflow three because of time i will request overflow one overflow two wherever you are making this altar call and those in quickly leave your seat very boldly and i like for you to come and stand right here let it be my honor and my joy to lead you to jesus i don't expect you to still be thinking about it the holy spirit should already be convicting you do not wait for anyone to come be the first let me for time's sake count one to five one quickly please if you're coming hurry up win that war do not say we came in group and i do not want anybody to know that i'm handing over my life to jesus receiving the life of god is not a funeral service is something that is worth celebrating koinonia are you appreciating them keep coming come to jesus young and old come to him the bible says all who will come to him he will in no wise cast away i don't believe this is all overflow one overflow two join them very quickly and the lord added daily to the church as many as should be saved hallelujah praise the lord make sure that overflow three has uh, the people out god bless you i salute your courage please lift your right hand as i lead you to make this prayer you're not just reciting a poem this is a real um conversation between you and the lord you are receiving his life and you're handing over yours say after me lord jesus say it from the depth of your heart lord jesus some of you come for altar call when we are saying in jesus name you are not born again you should come the the, the prayer you don't stroll around and then round up you don't round up the prayer of salvation you participate with your heart man believes are we together okay lord jesus i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you resurrected for me tonight I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life 
I have the life of God and I declare that from tonight I am a child of God I move forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones precious as they are we receive them into the fold the family of faith and I declare their sins forgiven and I declare by the authority of Scripture that beginning from today the grace to walk victoriously is released upon them Holy Spirit I commend them to you that you continue your ministry in their lives make mighty men and women out of them I bless you with the grace that grants you capacity to stay consistent may the Lord bless you in Jesus name I pray amen and amen I salute all of you for making this decision and then for those who also made online thank you for making this decision very quickly I like you to follow the someone waving her hands a lady and all of you in concerts please follow her and um, there'll be a group of people to receive you very briefly and you'll be back let's honor them Koinonia. hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching